One of my favorite movies and musicals is The Lion King. You remember that college choir trip that I had the chance to go to New York uh, when I was way many years ago uh, in college? I had the chance to see it on Broadway, and it was incredible. Uh, of course, the animated version I've seen over and over again, first time years ago when it first come, came out, and then again with my children as they've been growing up. Now, I haven't seen the newest version, the kind of the true to life, the real life. I don't know if you want to recommend that to me or not. You could tell me after the service may have seen it, um, but it, it is a, a great story. And if you know the plot, you remember that the main character, Simba, in his younger years has a particular vision of what it's going to be king, what it's going to be like. And one of the songs most fun, you can imagine it in your head, I'm not going to sing it to you, is about how he just can't wait to be king. And over time, he discovers that what it actually means to be king is different than what he thought that it would be. It's different than what he thought that it would be. Now, what do you think that it means to be king or to be in charge, to be the one in power? We're going to be taking a closer look at what this means for Jesus today in our message. We have been through numerous uh, transitions as a community and a country over the last several years. There have been and continue to be times when the question comes up, well, who is in charge? How, what, uh, what is the answer to the questions like, well, what do I need to do to stay healthy? When is violence justified, if ever? How can I best be a blessing to my neighbors through my actions? What's true? What's accurate? Who is in charge here? These months have brought ups and downs, joys and challenges. Intentionally or unintentionally, choices that impact our neighbors sometimes in good ways and sometimes in not so pleasant ways. And today we are concluding our series, A Life That Matters, in which we've been looking at how do we live as faithful followers of Jesus in the midst of all of today's realities to find a life that matters. Two weeks ago, we concluded the story of Ruth and considered how God is at work in the everyday details of our lives and how we can share our lives with others. It can be easy to forget that God is present with us in our everyday life, and offering our lives to God's love brings meaning and purpose. We can live a part of God's story. Last week, we considered the story of Jesus and his disciples in Jerusalem as they're responding to these temple buildings. It taught us to keep perspective on what is happening in our life and gives us a long view of God's work. God is still at work among us, even in difficult seasons. And today, we to look at what it means to be king, what it means to be in power. In the gospel for today, we jump from Mark, where we've been moving through the book, over to John's account of Jesus' life. I want to remind you that we are using the Revised Common Lectionary. It's a guide for readings in worship. The, the lectionary is a systematic approach to cover the entire scriptures over three years. It's used by congregations and denominations worldwide. And the purpose is to help us to hear whole message of scripture instead of focusing on only a selection of passages. This practice has helped me broaden my preaching and reflection on God's word and scripture. And this three-year cycle comes to an end today. Uh, next week, we begin again with the season of Advent, and today we celebrate the reign of Christ or Christ the King. So we are focusing on what it means to be king. Now, each of the three years, we focus on Matthew, Mark, or Luke, and then we have John sprinkled in throughout. In Mark's gospel, Jesus sometimes strains to accomplish these um, amazing tasks. In John, Jesus is described almost more fluid or ethereal, more philosophical, and seeks to describe himself to his disciples who are somewhat skeptical. But our reading for today isn't a philosophical debate with scribes or Pharisees and it's not an attempt for Jesus to define himself again to his disciples who just don't seem to understand. Instead, the surprisingly profound conversation between a prisoner who chains, Jesus, and his jailer who is holding all the keys of power. And amid the conversation, we can't help but wonder where is real power? Now remember that this G encounter between Jesus and Pilate is early in his experience with the Roman justice system. Jesus has not yet been whipped near to death or dragged out on display to a bloodthirsty crowd, but he's on a journey that will lead him to the cross. He hasn't yet heard the word 
Behold, your king sneered with sarcasm. He's been not treated very nicely by the temple guards, but, but it was just a taste of what was to come. Things were going to get much worse for Jesus. Now, Jesus had been in the governor's palace um, while Pilate, the governor, goes out to talk to the crowds to try to get some idea, what am I supposed to do here? How do I respond to this one that claims to be a king? Out there is where all the political posturing, the games are going, the exchange of favors, who's owed who, and, and how is this going to work out in the best possible way. And it doesn't really seem like anyone came, comes out ahead. So Pilate comes back inside, we can imagine, and he sees Jesus there, the source of all of his trouble. I imagine walking by and just saying out of the corners of his mouth, are you the king of the Jews? He waves his hand in Jesus' general direction as if to say, I cannot imagine that this person in front of me is in close to what it means to be a king. He's barely a sorry excuse for a holy man or a teacher, much less someone who would be in charge. Then Jesus takes control of the conversation. As it seems that he does over and over in the Gospel of John, everyone who thought they had Jesus cornered in conversation, he was left in consternation. Those to leave him, uh, to, to let him be left alone, were surprised at how much he cared for them. Jesus challenges all those who believe that flattery would get them somewhere, and even those who gave up everything to follow were left open mouthed at what Jesus is actually doing, how he's actually living, the power that he's exhibiting, and the way that he heals and teaches. The way he describes both God's kingdom that's coming in the future and the way that he's living it out through his actions. And in this encounter, Jesus turns his and Pilate's positions upside down. He responds, do you say this on your own or have others spoken to you about me? Jesus, the prisoner, becomes the judge, becomes the one asking the question. And Pilate, the one who had all the keys, discovered that none of them were really helpful right at this moment. <laughs> he says, listen, I, I'm not a Jew. Throwing up his hands and maybe backing away as if that could keep him safe. Jesus offers the perspective that Pilate is missing when he says, My kingdom doesn't originate with this world. My kingdom isn't from here. Now what is Pilate supposed to reply to this? How is he supposed to make sense of it? It doesn't seem to. How are we supposed to make sense of this? When Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Is it really true that all our faith is about is ultimately getting out of this world as fresh and clean as we possibly can? Should our focus be on some spiritual reality that has nothing to do with the pandemic or racial tension or political division or arguments in our neighborhoods? Perhaps we're just passing through or waiting for something somewhere else? It kind of sounds okay, doesn't it? Many of Jesus' followers throughout the centuries have certainly approached their faith in this way. But I don't believe that this is the faith that Jesus invites us to. Perhaps Jesus wasn't trying to spiritualize faith or separate it from everyday reality. He may very well have been describing a new way of living in the world. Instead of wielding political power with a big stick, Jesus aside the approach to governing that we see so often in our and instead offering power through a life of service and in that life finds true power, a life that matters. If my kingdom were of this world, he goes on, you'd have a war on your hands. There just might be an insurrection designed to get what we think we deserve, but that's not how we make our way in the world as God's people. The revolution that Jesus leads is like nothing seen before or since. Jesus proclaims and leads, reworks our relationships at their most fundamental level. And to quote another Disney movie, it's a whole new world. And Pilate just doesn't understand. He's too entrenched. He's too engrossed. He's so a part of the system, the power that he's a part of that he can't see anything else. But he follows up on that one piece of the conversation that he seems to pick up on, the one piece that makes sense to him. He says, so are a king. Maybe there is an insurrection here. Maybe I do get to call out the Roman legions and put down uh, 
discipline against the king. Maybe it's the vision of how God has created the world instead that it's what Pilate wants to destroy. Jesus replies, well, you say that I'm a king. Well, he's a saying here. It's this cryptic responses. Who knows what he's we, probably Pilate doesn't know. You say I'm a king because you think about kings. You think about power and conflict and authority and rule. Well, you might say that, but that the, what you're saying, what you're thinking, isn't actually the case. And this is how we think, isn't it? Whose side is and who has the majority? Will I get to impose my way of thinking everyone else? And today, on Reign of Christ Sunday, we encounter a different way of being in power. A different way of being king, a different way of leading in the world. You see, we believe that Christ is our guide, our example, our savior and friend, and that all proper authority indeed rests in him. And, but history seems to teach that a king is someone who rules by fear or a, by a threat of military action. But if we apply this to Jesus, we're completely missing the point. Jesus' way of leading, of being in authority, of living into power is an invitation instead for a life of service, for offering up our lives on behalf of others, on seeking to love our neighbor and our enemies. And in this conversation, Jesus seems to want to avoid the word king altogether. He takes this talk of kings and power and shifts to talking about the truth. That is what it means for Jesus king, truth. Jesus offers the truth about living, the truth about faith, the truth about meaning and purpose, lives and in our world, the truth about grace and reconciliation. This is the truth to which Christ testifies. This is the truth to which we are invited to live. And Jesus says, whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. Translation read, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And my question for us today is, are you listening to the truth of Christ? Are you living into this of being in service to the world, not pushing, not forcing opinions on others, but instead serving others in love. Because the good news is that when we follow Jesus, we are living in the truth. We live in the reality of God's unshakable kingdom, even though the kingdoms and the systems of God fall aside. A life that matters, a life that belongs to the truth. The truth of God's love in Jesus Christ, a life of telling and of truth living, because a lie cannot sustain us. A lie can't redeem us, even a beautiful lie, even something that we might long for. And to claim that the reign of Christ is to put an end of lies may be more challenging than we want to admit. So today, I declare intention to live a life that matters, a life of generosity that holds all of our possessions and our own lives lightly, to take the long view and as well as live fully in each moment, to live a life of belonging to the truth, the truth of God's love, a truth that goes beyond our limited individual perspective and allows our neighbors to hear Jesus speak through our words and actions, speaking peace and hope, and life, a life that matters. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you teach us, you teach us different ways of being in power, different ways of being followers than we might expect. I ask, oh God, that you would encourage and lead us to put your own to action, to faithfully follow you all of our days and to always live for you. We offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name.